before trapping the leg off. Here we go. Nice and simple. My son's gonna stand this way, so cause he's gonna be the one taking my impact. It's real simple. If it's conventional versus conventional, all right? The easiest way to look at it with your fighter is that his chest is facing that way, my chest is facing that way. So our chests are both facing opposite directions. I want to cause a leg kick to the inner thigh to him. When I'm in my stands and I'm here, so if I wanted the inner thigh kick and I try to trap his leg like he's in between my legs here, to get my inner thigh kick, it won't work. Why? Because if my legs are here and I go here, he's already halfway to the block. You following? So what I'm doing since both of our chests are facing the opposite directions, which is two conventional fighters, conventional fighters, <coughs> I am placing my lead foot to his rear foot. So his toe is facing my toe with my lead leg, his back toe. My front toe is facing his front toe. My back toe is facing his front toe. So we're here. I am halfway in there already. So what I'm doing is I'm actually just trying to pretend I'm stepping on his feet. So while we're here, I'm not going out here to try to get this kick because it's easy for him to check it. What I'm doing is I'm fighting this way. My right hand could put me in this position, just probing my right, throwing my teeth, whichever way it may be. When I'm here, I move here. Like if I'm going to the direction of his front leg. Once I go slightly in, my leg can go in. Even if he tries to cross over it, it beats his leg to it. Every time he tries to go here, if I place this foot right here on the outside, I can go in every time. And my rhythm, stay there, don't move nowhere. My rhythm places me here so he can't see it. This is why your tie rhythm is very important. Your four laws. One is that it's tall. I got everything. I'm tall. I got my rhythm. My palms are out. My four floors, I go move forward and backwards with the opposite leg. So if I'm here and I'm in my rhythm, and I go here, it's easy for me to get inside. Because if he tries to cross over it, I can get in before him. Once I move too much here and try to go for it, it's easy for him to block it. You follow me? This foot is trying to step here to his back foot, my front foot. My back foot is trying to step to his front foot. I can easily just walk in close while he walks back, walk in close a little bit, and lean right into it. If he goes to attack me, easy for me to take his leg, because I'm already out here. See what it? Easy for me to take his leg. If I throw my right hand to him just to probe, easy for me to come back, because my leg's always there. You following? So how do I get there? Moving forward or back. Even if I'm out here, I place myself here. My foot, my slide itself, puts me in this direction, right in there. You get it? If he stands as a softball, and I'm conventional, it won't work my front leg matching to his front leg, my back leg matching to his back leg, with my lead leg I'm talking about, just my lead leg. I'm being the conventional fighter here. Now I have to do what I would have done before if I was kicking with my back leg. For his front leg, I would have to pretend the foot is in between my legs. So I move this foot to push it out. Now it's between me. So while we're here, and he's in his stands, I'm going here to attack. Easy for me to hit his leg. You understand what I'm saying? If I wanted to attack him, I would have to pretend this leg, it is moving in the center of his legs. My rear leg is moving in the center, and I'm coming around. I'm always keeping it on the outside. A lot of people tell you when you fight a southpaw, keep your foot on the outside of your opponent. Same theory. Same theory. 
So if I'm here, I keep my foot on the outside. So whenever I throw, it's easy for me to hit there. Because it's harder for him to lift. If he tries to block, easy for me to push his leg this way. Now if I come in here and try to kick, I'm going right into him. You get it? Now 